Doing algebra, you're doing kind of opposite order of operations, so you're working the problem backwards. So you want to get rid of the minus 7 first, the plus or minus number. Uh, if you, you could divide by 3, the problem is you'd have to like divide all these by 3, and that makes a mess. So getting rid of the 7 first is definitely the way to go. How do I get rid of minus 7? Plus 7, and then... So the 3x comes down. I'm pretty sure, eighth graders, you did this last year, I'm sure. Yeah. You're not an eighth grader. Yeah. Um, might not have done like the huge problems, I'm guessing, but uh, yeah. Or did you, actually, did you guys take pre algebra last year? No, we took It was called seventh grade. Okay. I think she changed it this year. To pre -algebra. She did pre yeah, with some of the eighth graders or seventh graders. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's the answer. Even seventh grade math has this in it, although some of these might be a little tricky, but not too bad. All right, let's jump in. 3x minus 10. It almost looks the same. 3x minus 10 equals 14. Okay, who wants to go first? Number one. So, show your work. Okay, we'll go rain. Everybody's gonna get one, we'll get around. And we'll go this way. Okay, rain, what do I do? to get rid of minus 10, divided by 3 to get rid of times 3. Okay, number 3, 17 equals 3z plus 2. All right, Kenzie, what do we do? So we're trying to get a z by itself. We've got to get rid of a plus two and then a times three. So the plus or minus we're taking care of first. So that goes away. Three z equals six. Now what? Sorry, yeah, subtract nine, it's good. We're good. Subtract nine, then what? Divide the negative four. X over five minus 13. So negative 84 plus 13, uh, the negative's going to win there, so it would be negative 71. Uh, yeah, this, what does this mean right here? X, what? What's this bar mean right here? It means divide. So how do we get rid of a divide by 5? What's the opposite of divide by 5? Yeah. So the rules are, so if we were doing like 20 divided by 5, to cancel out the divide by 5, you would multiply by 5. 
because whatever this does to it, this does the opposite, so they kind of cancel each other out. Does that make sense? Like these, this would take it down to a four, but this would bring it back up to a 20. So these two kind of cancel each other out. So that's what we're doing here to get rid of a divide by five. We're multiplying by five. And that just goes away. And that is a big number. It's negative 355. P over 4 minus 9 equals 15. Okay, let's, uh, I guess, Jerry, yeah, we'll go to him and then come back. Yeah, okay, Draven, what do I do first on that one? Okay, then what? Subtract 2.3 to get rid of that. Okay, then on the left side we still have 1.5 R. And then on the right side we got, now we have 4.5. And then what do we do? Alright, anybody know how many times 1.5 goes into 4.5? Yeah, it's kind of like uh, how many times does a dollar fifty go into four dollars and fifty cents? Yeah, but it's three. If you're not sure, use your calculator. Just better safe than sorry. Thirteen. Okay, a number added to twenty-seven gives negative fourteen. Uh, let's go, Howie. So what's how would we write that? A number. Added to 27 gives negative 14. So what did we put the other day? It's probably a week ago. When it just said a number, what did we put for that? X or N or something, yeah. And then added to, uh, what was it? For, uh, added to 27, well, that's kind of a weird way of saying it gives. Usually they just says, they say equals, or is, I mean. They usually say is. Is 27, that means equal, or sorry, gives negative 14, that's, they're just saying equals negative 14. All right, so this is actually only a one-step equation. So what would we do to solve that? Okay, Katie says the difference of a number in negative nine. Do you remember what difference meant? No, that would be like the product would be multiply. Minus? Yeah. Because the example I always use is how do you find the difference between your age and like your mom's age? That would be, you'd have to subtract. You do your, like your mom's age minus your age. And that's how far apart. Anyway, difference means minus. So when it says 
the difference of a number in negative nine. What do we? Do you know what we put for number? Um, yeah. So n minus negative nine. Okay. So the difference means subtract, and but that's a negative. And then it says the difference is what equals is uh, negative 74. Okay, Katie, do you remember this from the first chapter? What does that mean when you have minus and negative? What's that basically do? Plus. Okay, so if it's a plus, how do I get rid of it? Minus. Correct. All right, so I think that's negative 33. All right, hold on. We're jumping a little bit. You guys noticed that. The <clears throat> 2136. Okay, 21. Uh, this is one that some people might actually miss, like more than a couple people might miss this. Every problem, there's like one or two people who like make a mistake like hit the wrong button or something but this problem a few people might miss I'm guessing and it's also the closest to number 12 so watch carefully I guess what I'm saying um, uh, can you tell what's different on this Triton what's different about this problem well, yeah, the other class couldn't tell you. But there's a minus W. So this is not W minus 17 like the other problems. Yeah. It's 17 minus W, which kind of changes things. Uh, we're still trying to get the W by itself. How do I get rid of this 17? Subtractive. Yeah, that is a positive 17. You could think of it as 17 plus negative W. To get rid of this positive value, we, we do need to subtract it. The minus is talking about the W. If I was trying to get rid of the W, I'd have to do plus W. But the 17 is positive, so you do have to just subtract 17. Okay, something else that's weird. What is left on the left side? What's going to be over here? Negative W. So not just W. Over here, negative 13 minus 17 is negative 30. Uh, Try to remember what we do with this guy, the negative. Mm, well, kind of depends on what you mean. So you, one way you can think of it, since there's no number right there, you can think of it as a negative 1w. And in that case, what would we do? Divide. Divide. So it's kind of like you're dividing by negative one. Now, what does dividing by one do? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. But what does dividing by the negative do? Yeah, it makes it opposite. If it was negative, it's going to become positive. If it was positive, it would become negative. So it just switches the sign. So W equals positive 30. And if you think about it, it should make sense because if negative W is negative 30, then W must be 30. All right, that 21 is most like number 12. Number 12 is kind of a weird one also. All right, my advice, so I graded all your... Uh, what page was that? When we did the distributive properties like Friday, especially when we're doing the harder assignments, I highly recommend you pay attention on the odds, okay? Because we did not do that great on that assignment. We did okay, probably had a low B average or something. That's, considering that we do the odds together, that's not a great score though. Um, But anyways, I know this assignment is pretty easy for a lot of you because you've seen it before. Minus 4.7. Negative 17 by 62. Okay. What word? What? Well, 
actually like a subtraction problem because the negative is bigger, so you have to figure out how much bigger it is. So it's, if I'm doing it by hand here. Okay. Anyways, and then we have to divide by 6.8. I kind of remember this one from the other class. It comes out as uh, negative 1.9, I believe. I got that right. There's nothing different about 23. It's just decimals instead of uh, whole numbers and in integers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 21 is a little weird. 22 is just like 21, and uh, 29 and 30 are a little bit weird. I don't know. That might be about it. But if you have any questions on any of them, just ask. I'll make sure you're doing it right. Oh, I kind of forgot to mention today. How can we always check, especially if it's like a test, how can I know that this answer is right? Plug it in. If, it, if you put it in right here, like 6.8 times negative 1.9, minus 4.7, you should get that, negative 17.62. That is a big help on a test. Get all those right. Number 25, y over 3.7, minus 4.5. Pearson, what do I do on this one? Plus times 3.7 is negative 4.81. first. Add one half. Now if you had to do this by hand you need a common denominator so this one would need a times two. This would need a times five. So that would be like 13 tenths. Now what do we do? Divide by negative two thirds. Okay, now in a calculator you wouldn't have to do this, but if you were doing it by hand, it would be times three over two. And those do not reduce, so it would be negative 39 over 20 when you multiply. I want that as a decimal? No, I do not. Or a mixed number. You don't need a mixed number either. Okay, 29. This one's different. X minus 5 over 2 equals 9.
Okay, it's different because the division bar is like across the whole left side. So, Bello, what do you think we should do first on this one? Uh, no, that's what makes this different. Uh, because the division bar kind of changes the order of operation. You can't add five because this five actually isn't worth five. It's actually kind of worth whatever five divided by two is, and this x is like x divided by two. So on the division bar, normally you would divide by two at the end. So when we're going backwards with algebra, you would take care of the divide by two first. So times 2x comes first. So this one's different than all the rest. Well, 30 is just like it, I guess. But So you actually start by multiplying. Because what happens is, when you multiply by 2, those just cancel out, kind of like that. The 2's go away. Then we still have x minus 5. Plus five. So now e plus 5. Okay, before we do the word problems, let me make up an example really quickly. Um, okay, let's say you guys are raising money for your senior trip, and uh, let's say let's say you already have a hundred, you know, twenty dollars in your account, and let's say you're trying to raise like eight hundred bucks. Yeah, let's let's say you have more than that. Give you a little bit of boost there. Let's say you have like four hundred twenty bucks. Let's say you're getting up to you're trying to raise eight hundred dollars to pay for your trip. And let's say you're going to sell t-shirts or something. And you're going to get $20 per t-shirt that you sell. So expensive t-shirts. Um, how do you write that as an equation to figure out how many t-shirts do I need to sell before I make it to $800? Okay, so we're starting at 420. And we're going to add on to that. Uh, not quite. Close. Okay, if x stood for the amount that we need to make still, that would be right. But what, what I asked was, how many t-shirts do I need to sell? So how would you figure out how much money you made from the t-shirts? Like, say you sold a 12 t-shirts. You would do 12 what? 12 times 20. You do the number of t-shirts times the price of each t-shirt to get how much money you made from the t-shirts, right? So that needs to go right here. So I said the price of the t-shirts is $20. Do we know how many t-shirts we sold yet? No. So how much money are we going to make? We're going to make $20 times the number of t-shirts. So $20 times the number of t-shirts we sell until we get up to 800. Pretty much all two-step problems look something like this. Okay, that's kind of the pattern. Like you have your starting amount and then you're gonna gain some each for each x or whatever until you get to, up to this number. Okay, does that make sense? And then you guys know how to solve it because we've been doing this the whole time. Okay. Yeah, I'll see that up there. All right, so on number 31, it's not really a word problem. Well, it kind of is a word problem, but it just kind of tells you what to write. Let's see where we are. Leah, the sum of 47 and 3 times a number is 68. Do you remember what sum meant? S U M add. So what are we adding? We're adding 47 and 3 times a number. So how would we write 3 times a number? Yes, 3x, 3n, 3 whatever. 
So we're adding those together. So 47 plus 3x. And then it said is, and what does is mean? Equals. Like if I said your age is 15 or however old you guys are, that means your age equals 15. Uh, is 68. So there, there's a 68. And then Leah, what would we do to solve that? Okay, and then what? Divide. By the way, you don't always divide the smaller number. Like if it was uh, like 10x equals 5, what would we be dividing by? 10. 10. And that would be a fraction. It's not equal to 2, it's actually equal to 1 over 2. So sometimes the bigger number goes on. It just depends whatever's next to x. That's what we're trying to get rid of. Okay, anyways. X is seven. All right, here's the normal word problem. Okay, this, how many nickels? So that's our variable, how many nickels? must be added to $2.47 to make a total of $3.12. Girls, are you listening? You need to listen to the word problems or the tricky part. So how many nickels must be added to $2.47 to make a total of $3.12? All right, so this kind of goes back to my t-shirt example. How would we find the value of nickels? Let's say I had a ton of nickels in my hand. How would you, how would we figure out the value of these nickels? Uh, no, not quite. Like, let's say I dumped a bunch of nickels out. How would you find their value? Well, you think quarters. Okay, you could add five cents plus five cents plus five cents, or what else could you do? Yeah, you take the number of nickels times five cents. So if I drop like 10 nickels, that's 10 times five, so it's 50 cents. So the value of the nickels is five cents times the number of nickels that you have. So on this problem, it says uh, they're starting with uh, two dollars and forty-seven cents, and we want to add on the value of our nickels. But I don't know how many nickels I have. So how am I going to write the value of my nickels? No, nope. close. She said five in. Now getting colder. Rain, what do you think? It's your turn. Are you listening? No. Okay. How do you find the value of nickels? You do five cents times the number of nickels. So how would I write that? Five cents times the number of nickels. Getting closer. Five times it. Point now. The decimal is a problem. So notice 0.47, this is, these are cents, this is a dollar. So what's five cents look like? No. Yes. So 0.5 is actually the same thing as 50 cents. 0.5 is like a half or half a, like a half a dollar. 0.5 and 50 cents are the same thing. So a nickel actually looks like, you guys know this, right? Nickel looks like this, 0 0.05. 0 0.5 means 5 out of 10 or 50 out of 100. 0 0.05 means 5 out of 100. So anyway, 5 cents times the number of nickels will give you the value of the nickels. And we want to get that total up to $3.12. All right, does that make sense? No pun intended, does it? 
So N does not stand for the value of your nickels. N stands for the number of your nickels. So if I have 12 nickels, does that mean I have 12 cents? Yes. No. If I have 12 nickels, how much money do I have? I have 12 times 5 cents. If I have N nickels, that doesn't tell me their value. 5 cents times the number of nickels tells me their value. Okay? If N is 12, yeah, this would be worth... If n was 12, this would be worth 60 cents. 12 times 5 cents. If n was, you know, 10, this would be worth 50 cents. So we need to figure out how many n's, how many nickels do we need to get this up to 312. There it goes. All right. So, Rain, what do I do to solve this? We did the hard part. We got the normal part. Okay, now what? Um, 65 cents divided by 5 cents is basically the same thing as 65 divided by 5. So that is 13. 13 is the number of nickels, not the value of the nickel. The value of the nickels would be 13 times 5 cents. <coughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully. Because there probably will be one of these, you know, something like this on the test. Plus there's a couple of ones today. All right, let's try one more. Last one of the odds. Okay, David is charged $19 a month and five cents a minute for his pay-as-you-go cell, cell phone plan. His bill is $21.35. How, how many minutes did he use? So we have, he has to pay $19 a month, no matter what, just for having the, uh, the cell phone the plan. Plus, on top of that, he has to pay five cents for every minute that he's on his phone, like calling somebody. So, and then his total bill was twenty-one thirty-five. So, Kinsey, how do we get up to twenty-one thirty-five? Um, I don't know. Okay, what's the starting amount? No matter what, how much does he have to pay? Nineteen. Dollars. Nineteen bucks. On top of that, he's got to pay five cents for every minute he's on the phone. Yeah, uh, how do we do five cents a minute? So if he was on the phone, let's say we knew it was for 20 minutes, how would we figure out how much he had to pay for that? 20 times five cents. If he was on the phone for 30 minutes, he'd have to do 30 times five cents. So he has to do five cents times the number of minutes that he's on the phone. Okay. You put those two costs together, the $19 just for having the plan, plus five cents for every minute, <coughs> which would be times every minute, and that would give him his total bill. Is that starting to make some sense? No. Okay, have you guys ever taken a taxi? No. no. Okay, you'd have to go to like, you know, New York or LA or something. Uh, or, I don't know. Actually, there's taxis in Bartlesville, you just, or an Uber, Uber. <clears throat> um, but the way they do it is just for like getting in the taxi, you have to pay, a, they call it a flat rate. It's probably like five bucks or something just for getting in the car. And then if they drive, the more they drive you like per mile, you have to pay an extra, I don't know, say a dollar per mile. So 
the way you'd write that is you have to pay five bucks plus, let's say it's two dollars per mile. You have to pay two dollars times however many miles you drive. So if it was like three miles, you'd have to pay six dollars. Four miles, eight dollars. Five miles, ten dollars. That makes sense? So that's kind of how it works. You have to pay this plus two times every one of these. So on this one, we had to pay 19 bucks for having the plan plus five cents times the number of minutes. And once you see this a few times, it gets less intimidating. Let's see, how much was this bill? 21.35. Maybe we'll do a worksheet with these, just do a few of them. All right, so uh, Kinsey, now's the easier part. What do we do to solve? I'm kind of out of space on the board here. All right, now what? Divide by point zero five. Okay, uh, let's see, that'd be like 47, I think. So what is M equals 47, what does that mean? 47 miles. Well, Three this minutes. was the minutes problem. This was the miles problem, maybe we'll think. Uh, yeah, he's on his phone for 47 minutes, like calling somebody. 